there was a question uh, about uh, the function mean CI uh, that is uh, mentioned in uh, the uh, mentioned in the homework. Let me share my screen. Uh, uh, here we have this uh, this problem, and here we have this function mean CI. And uh, this function, according to the documentation, uh, it has uh, an option trim. Uh, and uh, this is uh, uh, the fraction of observation to be trimmed uh, from each end of x uh, before the mean is computed. Uh, this uh, is um, this is a way to uh, in increase robustness of uh, our estimate. So if we assume that uh, we have some data set, uh, but we also you know, we uh, we probably have some uh, outliers which uh, formally belong to our data set, but uh, lie too far from the rest of uh, the points, and we believe that these outliers uh, are just um, obtained uh, due to some kind of error of measurement. Um, uh, then uh, we probably want to remove these outliers uh, just to improve. Uh, to improve robustness of our estimate, because, because if we not remove these outliers, uh, then uh, they will affect uh, our estimates. Uh, and um, if they are too far from the rest of uh, of the rest of our sample, then uh, it, and indeed uh, their presence uh, is due to uh, some errors uh, in measurement, uh, then uh, we will get. Uh, estimate uh, with larger errors uh, that we expect. Uh, so uh, sometimes uh, people use this trimming uh, just to remove uh, some uh, the uh, uh, some values that are uh, too low and some values that are too large uh, and uh, thus uh, increase robustness. But uh, we don't have to use uh, this option. Uh, by default, this option is set to zero, and uh, we just uh, use uh, it uh, as is. So, uh, we, in this homework, we just use this function uh, and put uh, our uh, our uh, sample here as a first argument, and that's it. Ah, it was so easy. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, so. Okay, now we have more participants here. That's good. Uh, are there any other okay. questions about the homework? Mm -hmm. uh, there was uh, a question uh, in a chat about uh, uh, to to which um, uh, how to. Uh, Apply TK uh, HSD uh, to which uh, to which uh, problems to uh, apply it. Actually, uh, the idea is just uh, that in this part of uh, the homework uh, here and here you do two ANOVA estimation for two parts of your data set, and uh, the idea here uh, is that you just try to use this TKHSD function uh, for both of the results of this uh, ANOVA. Uh, so uh, when you do ANOVA, you get an uh, object. So this this function a, a of uh, returns some object. And uh, this object uh, can be uh, uh, substituted to this TKHSD function. And it will, it will give you some information about uh, the differences and uh, corresponding confidence uh, uh, conf uh corresponding conf uh, confidence intervals so you can uh, you can see uh, uh, which uh, which values are different and which are not different um, significantly from statistical point of view mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay uh, so are there any other uh, questions about the homework? Okay, so we have a deadline tomorrow. Uh, 
uh, and if you have any question or if uh, some questions uh, appear tomorrow, just let me know. Uh, and uh, I, I, I hope that uh, I will be able to answer them. Um, okay, so uh, we can continue our discussion of uh, linear regressions. Let me share my screen, another screen. Okay, let us continue. Uh, we continue studying regressions. Uh, and uh, let me recall uh, that we discussed previously. Uh, we discussed an uh, example when we have two variables like x and y and we have some observations that can be plotted uh, in a scatter plot and we have some relation between these two variables uh, that uh, is more or less uh, like linear relationship and uh, then we uh, try to find a straight line uh, such that uh, this straight line approximates uh, our uh, data uh, in some good way. So uh, it is a straight line like this. Uh, so this straight line is given by an equation uh, like y equals to beta naught plus beta one x. And um, we use ordinarily squares uh, usually uh, to find this line. So uh, we uh, find a line uh, that approximates our data uh, in some good way. Uh, by choosing beta naught and uh, beta one uh, such that Uh, this sum is minimized. Uh, 
Uh, here uh, x1, y1, and so on, xn, yn, uh, our data. Uh, so this problem, uh, uh, this um, uh, uh, this operation of choosing uh, of this optimal beta naught and beta one uh, is called fitting. We fit a regression uh, and um, find this uh, these coefficients. So this is what we discussed previously. And uh, now let us uh, discuss in more details uh, some. And tricky moments uh, about regressions. Uh, first thing uh, is uh, the following. Uh, previously, we discussed only a uh, relation of uh, this line uh, to our data. Uh, but uh, as usually in statistics, we understand that our data is uh, a kind of um, something of a random nature. Uh, because uh, it is possible that we do different experiment with uh, the same settings. Uh, we just try to replicate uh, this experiment, but uh, we have uh, different people in uh, our sample, or we have different texts uh, in a corpus, uh, or we have something something different uh, anyway, and uh, we will get different data. Uh, what uh, we want to do is to provide uh, some estimates and conclusions uh, that uh, we will um, that will uh, be, in a sense, robust, in a sense uh, that uh, they will give more or less the same answers uh, if I try to replicate uh, this experiment. Uh, this, is, this is the usual problem uh, of statistics. Uh, so we understand uh, the following thing, uh, that uh, we have a particular line uh, that corresponds to this particular data, but if we uh, get a little bit different data, then uh, we will get a slightly different line. Or not slightly. Actually, it depends. Uh, so, uh, as usual, uh, we have some statistical tools uh, to uh, measure uh, these uh, alternative possibilities uh, for uh, this line. So, uh, it is possible to uh, consider uh, the following things that are associated with our linear regressions. Uh, first, uh, significance of the coefficient. Uh, so uh, we have uh, a model. Uh, y equals to uh, beta naught plus uh, beta one x. Uh, and uh, then we have some data. Um, assume that we have just two points in our data set. Uh, and uh, I ask the following question, okay. Uh, I have uh, my uh, I have this data, and uh, I can fit my regression, and uh, I can get uh, some straight line. Uh, of course, for example, for these two points, uh, I will get uh, some value of uh, both coefficients. Uh, but I understand that if I have only two points, uh, it is possible uh, that uh, if I try to replicate uh, the same study. Uh, it is possible that I will get a quite different picture. Assume that in reality there is no relation between uh, our two variables. Assume that we just have two independent variables, x and y, and um, x does not depend on y. This is just two, two random values. Uh, then uh, it is uh, equally possible to get uh, this kind of picture is if I have only two points in my data set. Uh, it is equally possible to get uh, this kind of picture or this kind of picture. 
And uh, here uh, I will get uh, B to one greater than zero. And here I will get uh, B to one less than zero. Uh, so uh, basically, if I have such small amount of data, uh, if I have uh, this result uh, with um, this positive B to not, uh, B to one, uh, it is not impossible to expect that uh, when I try to replicate my uh, experiment, I will get this kind of data and I will get negative value of this beta one. Just because uh, if I have only two data points, uh, it is not um, the fact that these points are arranged in this way does not contradict uh, the hypothesis that uh, there is no connection between X and Y at all, that they are independent. Even if they are independent, um, you know, in any case, it is possible that we have these uh, two points that are arranged in this way or in this way. Uh, so uh, we have we have to check: uh, Is it true that we can interpret uh, at least the sign of this uh, uh, of this coefficient? So uh, uh, I, I want to check uh, if I have this relation like this one. Uh, is it true that if I try to replicate my study, uh, is it true that uh, I will get uh, the same kind of relationship? Uh, again, positive, for example. So uh, we restate it in the following way. Uh, we have null hypothesis. And null, null hypothesis uh, says that uh, y and x are independent. Uh, or in other words, uh, it means that uh, our model is uh, null model uh, is like y equals to B to not. Uh, so no, uh, no x uh, x does not uh, x does not uh, influence this y. Or uh, we can rephrase it uh, in another way. We can say that uh, b to one uh, equals to zero. So uh, these three uh, these three null hypotheses are equivalent for this kind of model. We can say that uh, beta one equals to zero. It means that uh, X does not change Y on average. Uh, or uh, we can say that uh, this model is correct and not this model is correct. And so this is another way to, 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 to say the same thing. And uh, then uh, we can uh, try to, we have, uh, we have alternative like uh, beta one not equals to zero. And uh, then we can use uh, statistical tools uh, to test uh, these hypotheses. This is done actually uh, just by a kind of t-test, but I don't want to go into uh, details of how uh, it is done. Uh, I just want to uh, say uh, what is tested. Uh, the tested is a hypothesis that uh, there is uh, no uh, dependence and uh, an alternative is that there is some dependence. Uh, so uh, again, uh, everything is done automatically. Uh, actually, when you do this uh, statistical, uh, do this uh, model fitting uh, in R, uh, it will report your p-value that is associated with uh, this kind of test. And uh, if uh, it associates a p-value that does not allow you to reject null hypothesis, uh, then uh, it means that using the data that we uh, have, we cannot uh, decide that uh, there is uh, some dependence at all. We have some, we have some numer uh, numeric estimate for this B to one, but we cannot generalize uh, this uh, estimate to the whole population. We cannot even uh, we cannot even say that uh, there is some dependence between uh, y and x. 
Uh, this uh, holds if you have a small amount of data um, or uh, not or not so visible or not so visible dependency between y and x. Uh, actually, it is uh, related for uh, regressions with just two variables. Uh, it is actually related to um, uh, a correlation test. When you test, uh, is it true that you have uh, non-zero uh, correlation between two variables? Actually, for uh, this kind of regression, uh, it is equivalent tests. And so uh, the first uh, the first thing is that uh, uh, we say that coefficient beta one is significant. Uh, if we can reject null hypothesis in this test. So it basically means that we have uh, some value of the coefficient that is uh, statistically significant different from zero. We see this difference from our statistical data. Uh, and uh, if coefficient is not significant, you cannot interpret it. in any way. Uh, so uh, if we see that uh, we have some B to one, uh, we have some estimate, but it is not significant, uh, then it just means that uh, from our data, uh, we cannot uh, decide uh, that uh, the value that we have uh, can be generalized uh, in any way to, to the population. So we cannot interpret it because uh, in our interpretation, we want to make claims uh, about population, not about our particular data that are subject to some randomness, but uh, about uh, about our population, about some process that generated this data. This is as uh, it happens uh, every time when we do these statistical tests. So this is uh, the first point uh, that uh, I want to uh, I want to uh, discuss. Are there any question about uh, about this idea? I'm sorry, I did not get the idea why it is so important to, to do such a test uh, instead of previous one. Uh, previous one, sorry, uh, the, we have only one test uh, currently. Uh, we, uh, we have this test uh, that that tests that a particular coefficient like this one, beta one, uh, is not zero. Uh, so we have only one test. And uh, okay. if we, mm -hmm, uh, and if we, and if we cannot reject null hypothesis, uh, then uh, we cannot make any claims uh, about this beta one. It, we just, we just, uh, we just don't have enough data to say that we see some uh, dependency between y and x. We probably can draw this line, but uh, we cannot. Uh, we cannot say that uh, a similar dependency presents uh, in uh, in the population. In other words, we cannot claim that if we repeat our experiment, that uh, we will get uh, some kind of similar results. We just see no relation between uh, y and x if we uh, cannot reject null hypothesis, if uh, if uh, the result is not statistically significant. Okay. I see. Yes, mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. So uh, are there other questions? Um, uh, again, <laughs> that's me again. Uh, mm -hmm. And significance means uh, how how many or like 
like which level is significant? Uh, well, uh, significance uh, significance means uh, that we can uh, reject null hypothesis. This is like in t tests. Uh, when uh, we see some difference between, uh, for example, we, we see some difference between two samples, but we uh, have to make a t-test uh, to decide uh, are, um, is uh, this difference significant or not. And uh, this is uh, a similar concept. Uh, we make this test uh, to see is this coefficient significantly uh, different from zero. Uh, again, uh, like in any other test, we have to choose a significance level, but this significance level is usually 5%. Actually, statistical software uh, usually uh, usually draw uh, some uh, uh, asterisks uh, that uh, represent some level of uh, significance, like uh, uh, significant on 5% level, uh, significant on 1% level, and so on. But we usually are interested in uh, significance with, uh, uh, with significance level of 5%. So we use, uh, we use 5% to decide uh, is something significant or not. Uh, okay, you, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, one more question. Yes. Uh, so if I understood, uh, when uh, beta one is equal to zero, we have an, uh, an horizontal line? Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, if, uh, if I say that y and x are independent, it means that on average, y and x just uh, um, do not depend on each other. The corresponding picture here is uh, the following. Uh, let me draw it here. So uh, assume that we collect uh, a lot of data and with this, uh, a lot of data, we see uh, something like this. Uh, and uh, in this case, uh, our best fit curve uh, is just horizontal. We don't see uh, any, uh, any statistical, uh, statistical relation between uh, Y and X. It means that uh, no matter uh, the value of x, value of y is equals to some constant uh, plus uh, some random uh, random noise uh, that is uh, always unavoidable. Uh, so we see that uh, there is no any uh, like um, systematic shifts in y uh, when x is changed. I see. And, uh, mm -hmm. Uh, what does uh, what does the formula of this test uh, use? Uh, this formula use uh, the actually it is uh, actually it is a variant of t test. Uh, we uh, we will take into account uh, how many data we have. Uh, the more data, uh, the uh, more chances to see uh, the effect of dependency between x and y, and uh, we also take into account uh, how how strong uh, our relation is. Uh, so basically, uh, it is uh, in, the second thing is just uh, uh, just uh, variance. Um, sorry, it, the second thing is just correlation. Yeah, right. Um, basically, I think that we have only these two only these two things uh, when we when we do this regression with two variables. Uh, if we have a regression with more variables, we use um, a little bit different thing. Uh, I will probably explain it later. So uh, basically my idea is that even if uh, our real data is like this, if we just get uh, only two randomly selected samples from this data, uh, we can uh, take, uh, we can get this kind of uh, data or this kind of data. Uh, and uh, then it means that if we see this picture, uh, we cannot say that this picture is impossible. So this is, this is my idea of uh, this uh, rejection uh, of null hypothesis. Okay, more questions, please.
Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so we can try to continue. Uh, now, uh, at the end of uh, the previous classes, uh, we discussed that uh, all the things uh, that we see from uh, correlations and regressions uh, cannot be automatically uh, automatically uh, interpreted uh, as uh, things uh, that have some causal relationships. Uh, and uh, now let us try to invent uh, some tools that allow us uh, sometimes to answer causal questions. Uh, let me consider the following story. Actually, this is an adaptation of, uh, a, real, uh, of a real historical, uh, historical uh, things. Uh, and the, at the beginning of uh, mathematical statistics, uh, at the beginning of, uh, of uh, previous century, uh, there was a large debate uh, about, um, is it true that smoking is uh, bad for health or not? Uh, now it is not, uh, there is no such debate. Uh, it is a consensus uh, that uh, smoking is uh, bad for our health, uh, that it decreases uh, the life expectancy uh, and so on. Uh, everybody believes uh, it more or less, but um, at the beginning of uh, the century of previous century, it was not so obvious. And uh, at the same time, uh, people started to systematically study statistics. And uh, so they tried uh, to use these statistical tools to answer these questions. And uh, to answer this question, we can try to use some kind of correlations and regressions. Let me assume that I collected uh, a data that looks like the following. We have two variables. Uh, the first variable is number of cigarettes per day. And uh, another variable is life length in years. And uh, let me assume that I collected some data and uh, this data looks like the following. This is completely fake data. I just uh, draw some points. Um, but it is possible that we have these dates. Uh, the, this data in my, in my experiment, in my survey. Uh, and mm, let me assume that I want to prove in the sense uh, that smoking kills uh, or uh, more rigorously that smoking decreases your life expectancy. And uh, to do so, I uh, collect this data and then I fit a linear regression uh, for this data. Let, let me assume that yeah, I collected a lot of data. So uh, I don't, um, so uh, I can be sure that I will get a significant result. And uh, I have some uh, best fit approximations, some OLS uh, approximations, some straight line. And uh, this uh, straight line is given by an equation. Uh, let me assume that uh, this equation is like uh, y equals to as usual. And let me assume that beta naught uh, is, uh, for example, 80. And beta one is, for example, minus two. Uh, so it is possible, it is possible that uh, I collected this data, fitted my model, and get these results uh, as my fitting. Um, then uh, I show this, uh, I show this um, uh, data to uh, somebody who thinks uh, that, uh, that uh, smoking doesn't hurt health. Uh, and show it uh, to them uh, and um, 
probably they uh, can see that there is some uh, relation between uh, life length and smoking. And um, we can interpret uh, these numbers. By the way, what is the interpretation of these numbers? 80 and negative two in this case, in this experiment, in uh, real life terms, how to interpret it. AT is the uh, average life length for a non-smoking person. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, exactly. Uh, so interpretation of uh, this uh, beta, uh, beta naught uh, is uh, that uh, if uh, one doesn't smoke, Uh, he or she uh, lives uh, 80 years on average. Yeah, this is uh, this is this number. This is 80. Uh, yes, uh, and negative two in the amount of years lifeline descends in relation to the amount of cigarettes per day. Uh, Manuel, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, we can say that in uh, in just uh, a very uh, real life terms, uh, we can say something like that: every cigarette uh, uh, takes two years of your life. Just this can be put on some advertisement uh, against smoking. So uh, beta one uh, is interpretation is that every cigarette uh, per day uh, takes two years of your life. Okay, everybody agree with this interpretation? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, let us assume that we use this data to try to convince uh, somebody uh, who likes smoking and who uh, uh, don't believe that smoking decreases uh, the life expectancy. And um, they say, okay, but um, this is just a correlation and uh, correlation doesn't give you a causal relationship, but you try to, you try to make some claim about causal relationship. You try to say that uh, it is uh, due to smoking increase, uh, the life uh, expectancy of these people decreases. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, Fedor is correct. Uh, this could be influence uh, of some, uh, some other factor that is uh, associated, uh, that is associated uh, with, uh, that is associated with both uh, life length and uh, cigarettes. Uh, we can actually try to try to uh, guess uh, which factors can uh, play this role. Uh, any suggestion? Smoking people drink a lot and don't sleep well. Uh, they have more stress. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's a great uh, a great suggestion. Yes, uh, it is probably that. Uh, there is some other factors, um, for example, that uh, we have some factor of stress and people who are under stress, they both, uh, they both, uh, they both um, uh, drink a lot and also they, for example, drink more alcohol just because uh, these are two ways to uh, fight with stress for them. And uh, then it is possible uh, that it is not uh, it is not cigarettes uh, that takes your years of life, but for example, alcohol. But if we just measure these two variables, uh, cigarettes and uh, uh, life length, uh, then in this setting, uh, we see the same correlation. So uh, it is possible. Uh, let me redraw this. Uh, so it is possible. Uh, that we have 
uh, another factor that is correlated uh, with smoking and uh, is causal uh, Uh, causal reason of uh, life decrease, life length decrease. Uh, and for example, uh, let us consider uh, the following diagram, the, co the following causal diagram. Uh, we have stress. And uh, this stress affects, uh, for example, smoking. And uh, this stress affects also alcohol, alcohol cons consumption. And alcohol decrease life expectancy. So, uh, in uh, in this uh, causal scheme, in this causal diagram, uh, we assume that uh, the reason of, of decrease of life length is uh, increased consumption of alcohol. Uh, but uh, alcohol and smoking are correlated with each other because uh, they have uh, the same uh, the same uh, thing that uh, is causally associated with both of of them. We say that. Uh, stress uh, increases uh, smoking causally, and stress increases alcohol. Uh, also, that uh, that uh, we that people drink alcohol because of stress, and people smoke because of stress. And if uh, this scheme uh, is correct, if this model is correct, this is just one of the possible uh, causal models. But if it is correct, then uh, we can get uh, the same data that we have here. We can see the, the same picture. But uh, in this case, uh, this uh, picture does not give us uh, any uh, causal conclusions. We cannot say that uh, you have to stop smoking to be healthy. We, from, from this picture, we have to, to say, okay, we have to stop consuming alcohol to be healthy. But we can smoke uh, if if we, if we want. It doesn't it doesn't uh, affects uh, this life plan. Uh, so this scheme is also compatible with our data. What to do? How to how to um, overcome this issue? Uh, now I want to test something about this scheme. How can I do? Uh, how can we uh, show that uh, this scheme does not hold. Any ideas? You can, uh, you can uh, imagine some other experiments, uh, but just, uh, just let us try to find these experiments that will allow us to disprove this scheme. Am I right that whatever experiment we choose, uh, we should um have some um, um, expectations on what is real co co causing could be, but we can well, just basically yes, basically yes. If you want, if you want to say something causally, you have to you have to use some uh, some prior knowledge to uh, do some uh, kind of diagrams like this. Otherwise, um, it is almost impossible to do it. 
but uh, if we think about this diagram, uh, we probably can try to um, find a way to disprove it, to show that this diagram does not hold in reality. Let us try to, to design an experiment that is able to disprove this diagram. Any ideas how to do it? Uh, you... maybe... Sorry. Yes, yes. Uh, maybe uh, we can uh, look at smoking and uh, we have not only stress uh, as a reason of smoking, but for example, don't know, pleasure uh, and uh, pleasure is um, uh, more strong. Uh, and uh, uh, and this way, smoking and alcohol are not so strongly correlated. Yeah, well, we can consider different kind of diagrams, but uh, my question now is the following: uh, It is possible to consider this diagram, and uh, I want to disprove it. So uh, I want you to uh, to give me some uh, design experiment. Uh, design of some experiment that uh, allows to test and disprove uh, this this diagram. How to show that uh, that uh, this arrow should present in this diagram? We can take only smoking people and on, only taking alcohol. Only people, only people that take alcohol, and only people. Can you can you can you explain a bit more? Uh, so, uh, for example, we have people who both uh, do both smoking and alcohol, and we can take uh, uh, other groups of people who only smokes or only takes alcohol. Uh, who who don't smoke and takes alcohol, right? Yeah. So, uh, basically, you say that you want to compare uh, people. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, uh, here is suggestion from Sarah. Um, make four samples of people to make feel stress. Uh, two other samples. Show one smoke, other drink, but no stress. Okay. Uh, let us uh, let us assume that we cannot uh, measure this stress. This is just a psychological factor that we cannot measure, but we can measure the smoking and this alcohol. These uh, are just objective factors. We can just measure how many cigarettes uh, this person smoke a day, just in laboratory condition, for example. Uh, and so let us um, consider these two variables, actually these three variables, smoking, alcohol, and uh, life length. Uh, assume that we have this information about our informants. So consider three variables. Uh, smoking, alcohol, uh, and life length. Yes, uh, uh, as Sarah suggests, uh, to find uh, the value of life length, we have just to uh, wait until people die. But this is actually what uh, is done in uh, this kind of research. We just have some statistics. Uh, we, uh, we observe people during their whole life. Uh, we ask them questions about uh, their state, and uh, then we just uh, uh, sometimes, unfortunately, everybody dies, and uh, we have this uh, this number. Uh, so, so we have these three variables. Uh, what what uh, what values you want to compare? Values uh, for which groups you want to compare to answer the the question uh, that we have here to answer some causal question.
I think something close uh, was uh, already discussed, but uh, probably somebody can uh, state it. Number of deaths uh, or life lengths, uh, people that smoking but not drinking alcohol and uh, the other group. And the other uh, group is? Is a uh, group not... of uh, life lengths of group of people who uh, drink alcohol but uh, don't smoke. Oh. Don't smoke and to drink alcohol. Mm. Maybe not the number, but the coefficient that uh, shows that, I don't know how to say, like mm -hmm. the coefficient uh, that uh, makes the line, um, I don't know. There, uh, this is called regression coefficient, uh, this like beta one. Yes. Yeah? You, you mean this thing? Yeah. Uh, this is called regression coefficient, centrigracy. Uh, Okay, uh, yes, um, it is possible, uh, but uh, okay, mm, uh, if, we, if we compare these two, uh, these two groups, if we compare, for example, uh, life expectancy in this group, a group of people who smoke but don't uh, drink alcohol, and this group, uh, we actually, again, we have, uh, we don't have uh, any, uh, any, strict results. Uh, it is possible that uh, we have, mm, okay, uh, it is possible that uh, we have a uh, larger value, uh, it is possible that we have smaller value here than here, but uh, it uh, can be, uh, it can be explained uh, by the fact that Alcohol uh, is uh, very good for your health. Somebody can say, okay, uh, okay, you, uh, you, you show that uh, these people, um, okay, um, uh, if... Sorry, maybe, maybe we, we should compare this uh, like bad, uh, group with good group so we, we should have a uh, group of people who uh, do nothing under stress uh, do nothing uh, so n not smoking not, not smoking uh, drinking. not smoking okay. and not drinking and not drinking okay uh, we have the third group not smoking not smoking and not uh, not drinking we no, have okay. uh, we can have one more group uh, uh, of people who smoke and uh, drink alcohol so they should die uh, easily mm -hmm. better under under alcohol yes um no alcohol, alcohol no, uh, so we have basically we have four possible groups if we just binarize our variables so uh, in our discussion to simplify things uh, we naturally binarized uh, our uh, variables uh, after uh, just a couple of minutes we will return to our original setting when we have uh, when these variables are measured like in number of cigarettes per day or number of bottles per day but now uh, we in fact can uh, can just uh, binarize them and consider these four groups uh, which groups should we compare to test this uh, to test this uh, this diagram? We want to show that this is smoking that affects life length. We want to disprove this diagram. This diagram says that there is no relation between smoking and life length. But I want to disprove it. Uh, which groups I have to compare out of these four groups uh, to, to disprove this diagram? Smoking and non-smoking. And what about alcohol? We have four groups. Uh, we have to compare group number one and group number three 
uh, and uh, can we compare some other groups? Can we, are, can we be interested in some other groups? Uh, the second and the fourth, and the second should be better. Yeah, uh, I think that uh, to, to disprove uh, this scheme, uh, we have to make these two uh, comparison. Uh, we have to compare one and three. And uh, if we see that in uh, the smoking group, life length is less than uh, group number three, uh, we can attribute this uh, to smoking and not to alcohol because we have uh, the same amount of alcohol in uh, both of these groups. And uh, the same holds uh, for comparison of uh, group number two and group number four. Again, we have the same uh, uh, value of alcohol variable for these two groups. So if we have difference in life length between these two groups, this difference have to be uh, explained by this variable and not this variable because uh, this variable uh, have the same value for uh, both groups. So we have to compare people uh, that are different in their smoking habits, but uh, who are similar in their alcohol habits. And if we see that for these people, uh, we, have, uh, we have difference in life length, uh, then uh, we can say that uh, these difference have to be attributed to smoke, but not to alcohol. Uh, I want this idea to be uh, very clear. Regression between each pair of the parameters. Yeah, uh, Alexei is correct. Uh, we'll do, we will do some uh, multiple regression now. But uh, before we proceed to regressions, I just want this idea uh, that does not involve uh, any regressions and any sophisticated things. Uh, I want this idea to be clear. We have to compare if we if if we want to disprove this scheme. Uh, we have to compare groups that are identical with their alcohol habits, but different uh, in the in their smoking habits. Other questions about uh, about this this plan? And everybody agree that if we show that uh, there is a statistically significant difference in uh, this uh, comparison, then uh, we disproved uh, this scheme. We, uh, if somebody tries to convince us that smoking uh, does not uh, uh, decrease the life length using this scheme, uh, using this, uh, this model, then uh, we, if we get this evidence that uh, life length here is less than life length here, then uh, we, have, we have a strong evidence against, against this, uh, this theory. Everybody convinced? Yeah, but I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, is it possible to trust an experiment when, uh, in which we compare uh, only half uh, of our data, for example, only first and third groups? Mm. Well, uh, it, depends, uh, it depends on how much data we have. Sometimes it is possible if we have enough data to uh, see that there is statistically significant difference between these groups. Uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes not. But uh, anyway, uh, for example, if we do this uh, comparison only, uh, we can uh, then we can, at least uh, we can generalize our conclusions to other groups uh, that are like our groups. So uh, if, for example, we get this experiment and see the result in this experiment, uh, then, okay, then we showed that uh, smoking decreases life length um, uh, with alcohol controlled, uh, at least for groups who do not drink alcohol. Um, we can do this, this kind of uh, generalization. Other questions?
Okay. Now uh, let us plug some regressions uh, into our study. Uh, what I, I want to do is I want to consider a new model. In uh, this new model, uh, I have uh, the following relation. Uh, I have life, life length. Uh, that is a function of two variables, uh, smoking and alcohol. Uh, now, uh, actually, uh, now we have ev everything everything the same as previously. Uh, we have the same algorithm of uh, fitting of these numbers, but uh, it is a little bit um, more difficult to imagine uh, uh, what happens because uh, previously we have function of just one variable and we can imagine this straight line, but now we have a function of two variables, and uh, it means that we have to uh, imagine some plane, uh, but just don't try to do it. Uh, it doesn't help much. Uh, I just want to say that uh, I can do exactly uh, the same thing as previously. I have some data. Now data contains uh, values of these three variables. And then uh, I can uh, choose uh, these values of uh, beta, uh, not beta one and beta two, uh, such uh, that uh, this relation is the best approximation to my data, just like previously. Okay, now uh, let us try, uh, for a second, uh, let us try to believe in this, uh, in this model. Let us assume that this model holds. Uh, then um, I want to try to do some comparison like this ones. Uh, let me um, let me uh, put some numbers just to simplify things. Uh, let beta naught equals to eighty, beta one equals to uh, negative one, and beta two equals to negative two. Assume that I have uh, I have these numbers. Uh, smoking is measured in number of cigarettes per day and alcohol is measured is number of bottles per day. Uh, and I have this, this coefficient. And now um, let us discuss how to interpret uh, these coefficients. Uh, to do it, uh, let me consider two persons. Uh, two persons uh, with the same Okay, uh, let me put here something uh, a bit larger number. Uh, consider two persons with the same alcohol consumption. Uh, that are different in their smoking. Uh, by one cigarette. So uh, I have two persons. Uh, second person uh, smoke 
uh, one cigarette per day more than the first person. Uh, what is the difference between the life length? If model is true. So uh, I, I have two I have two persons uh, and uh, I know that they have the same uh, amount of alcohol consumption and I also have uh, and I also know that uh, their difference in their smoking is just one cigarette per day. What is the difference between their life length? If I believe in this model, if I if if I think that this model with these parameters is in fact correct. What can I say? Then there will be no significant difference between the two. Mm. Why? So uh, if the model in which smoking doesn't affect life length is correct. No, 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 no. Currently we consider this model. Ah, okay. Yeah, then the difference must be uh, 15 years less uh, for the second person. Uh, not 15, just here, uh, here is just uh, one and a half, if you think oh, about okay. this variable. Sorry. One year. Um, first person lives longer. Yes, uh, and uh, the difference between these two persons is uh, one and a half years, uh, because um, okay, uh, I can just uh, I can just uh, draw this. Um, I can just write uh, this thing again. Uh, I have I have smoking of the second. Uh, it equals to smoking of the first plus one and uh, then it means that life length of the first equals to beta naught uh, plus beta one smoking one plus beta two alcohol and uh, life length of the second is beta naught uh, plus beta one smoking first plus one plus beta two times alcohol. And uh, we can expand everything. This is beta naught plus uh, beta one times smoking one plus beta one plus beta two times alcohol. So uh, we see that in these two formulas, uh, everything coincides, this coincides to this, this coincides to this, and uh, this coincides to this and uh, the only difference uh, is uh, this term. So we see that uh, the difference uh, between life length of the second uh, person and uh, life length of, this, of the first person equals to this uh, beta one. Uh, this is, uh, this is uh, what we have. And uh, if we believe in our model and this estimation, uh, then uh, we say that a life length of the second person is um, uh, one point five years less than the life length of the first person. Uh, 
is it uh, is it clear this calculation? Are there any questions about this? Mm -hmm. So it's really clear, right? I just need some reaction. Okay, good. So uh, I can say uh, now that uh, if I uh, look at this uh, at this variable at this coefficient, uh, I see that uh, the interpretation of this coefficient is the following. Uh, it is how many uh, uh, it is the following. If uh, we increase smoking and uh, get uh, the same level of alcohol, uh, how uh, this uh, affects life, uh, life uh, length. So in other uh, sense, uh, this coefficient uh, shows you how uh, these variables uh, affect uh, these variables when this variable is fixed. Um, and uh, actually, this interpretation is the most correct one. It shows how difference in smoking uh, uh, is related to difference uh, in life length when we fix this alcohol. Um, and uh, actually, if we think about this uh, beta 2 variable, how can we interpret uh, it? How can you provide some real life interpretation of this uh, variable beta 2? How to interpret this coefficient? coefficient? Uh, near this alcohol variable. Actually, you can do it uh, in uh, a similar way. How, uh, yes, uh, how alcohol uh, affects uh, life length if, if smoking is kept constant. Uh, in, uh, exactly. So, uh, note that uh, this uh, this model uh, e can be considered as compatible with this scheme, and it is also compatible with uh, the scheme when uh, there is an arrow uh, from smoking to life length. So, uh, e in this model, uh, we assume that uh, there is uh, that uh, there are both uh, effect of smoking and effect of alcohol. Uh, now, let us assume that we uh, used this model and let us assume that uh, we showed that uh, there is a significant negative coefficient of uh, beta 1. We used this model, we fit it uh, to the data and uh, we see this coefficient and this coefficient is significant. So it is not zero. What can we say? We can say that if uh, somebody uh, suggests that this is effect of alcohol only to the life length, then we disproved this uh, this idea because we show that even uh, for people who have the same alcohol consumption, there is a difference uh, in the predicted life length uh, if we change the smoking. So uh, this this uh, negative and significant correlation uh, disproves this green uh, scheme and shows that there is uh, this red arrow here if we have if we have this uh, this value so this is basically uh, a way uh, to use this regression this is basically a way uh, to do this uh, comparison but but for uh, 
continuous data. Uh, how clear uh, is this idea? So, uh, if our data uh, give significant coefficient beta one, uh, then we cannot explain a change in life length uh, with alcohol only. Uh, we would suggest uh, that uh, there is causal uh, relation Small can life length. Okay. Uh, now, uh, can you can you try to continue defending the idea that smoking does not uh, affect life length? Uh, can you can you suggest some other explanation? Uh, that uh, will not be beaten by uh, this model. Assume that you really want to prove that this is not smoking that decreases the life length, but something, some other effect. Uh, can you? Sure. Uh, yes? Maybe working in an office decreases life length, and it is also correlated with smoking. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Actually, uh, it is possible even after we did this uh, this thing, even if we uh, took into account this alcohol consumption, uh, people in statistics say that we control for this alcohol consumption. Even if we did it, it is still possible that there is uh, some other missing variable uh, that affects both uh, that affects the life length and due to some reason uh, correlated with smoking. And we see this effect. Uh, how, can we, how can we fight with uh, these arguments? Any ideas? Assume that we have a new variable like, uh, like number of hours in the office. And, uh, we assume that it is somewhat uh, correlated with smoking, but this is this is what kills uh, people's office, but not but not smoking. How can we fight with this uh, with this argument? We just randomly use uh, use people. We just randomly uh, people for our experiment. Uh, and uh, the large part of them shouldn't be from the office. Okay, again, you want, uh, you want to get a sample uh, of people who, uh, for which uh, you have the same value of this uh, office variable, right? And compare among them. Uh, is it your idea, right? Maybe. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, correct. Uh, but actually, actually, we are we are currently in some kind of natural experiment. Um, uh, but uh, another way, a, another way is just to include this new variable in our model. We can just uh, add uh, another another term here, like beta three times office. Uh, and so on. 
uh, every time when we think about new variable that can affect the life length and be correlated with smoking, we can just add it to this model. And uh, then uh, if we see that uh, our coefficient uh, for smoking is uh, still significant, uh, when we took into account uh, another variables and new variables and new variables, then uh, we probably can make uh, this uh, causal, uh, causal, how to say it, uh, ca uh, causal conclusions. Uh, actually, this is what uh, this is what people do at economic conferences. I was once uh, at a economics conference, and uh, people uh, discuss uh, their results in this way, just like we have this model, we took into account this, 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 and this. And so we believe that we have some causal uh, relationship between these two variables. But then somebody stands and asks, uh, okay, uh, what if we uh, have uh, this variable that you did not took into account? Uh, what if we add in this variable into model and then they discuss it, does it work it uh, or not? So this is basically one of uh, the way, uh, a very popular, uh, how we can sometimes, if we strongly believe uh, in some kind of um, causal diagrams like this, uh, then uh, we can uh, say something about them uh, using this, uh, using this uh, kind of reasoning, uh, using this multiple regression, regression with several variables. This is extremely popular. Uh, at least in econometrics and in other branches of science, science that use uh, these techniques. Um, uh, um, well, uh, yes. In, in fact, uh, in, in a sense, it is possible. Uh, it is possible, for example, that in this uh, in this story, it is possible that we have uh, arrow like this. Probably, uh, or, uh, or in the opposite direction. Yeah, probably after people smoke, they like to drink alcohol. Uh, probably there is some causal relationship like this. And actually it does not contradict uh, this scheme of reasoning. Actually, it is possible that we have just this part of diagram without this stress. We just, it is possible that just people, uh, due to some reasons, uh, smoke and this smoking increases their chances to drink alcohol and alcohol uh, decreases life length. And uh, we see it as a correlation between smoking and life length, but this is actual, uh, this, uh, this thing uh, that works. This is also possible. But uh, anyway, both of these alternative interpretation uh, are, uh, are disproved uh, by this reasoning if we have uh, some significant value here. Other questions? Uh, if it's possible that uh, beta 1 equals to 1, beta 2 equals to 2, but when they work together, they affect life with uh, b equals to 10. Uh, yes, this is a good question. And uh, we will discuss it later when we will discuss things that is called interaction. Uh, the, it is possible that two factors not just add, uh, do not just give some adding terms here, but that they interact uh, in some way. It is possible and there are tools that uh, allows uh, us to uh, see is it true or not. We will discuss it a bit later. Okay, so uh, we have, I think we have 10 minutes break now and after that, uh, we will do some practice, okay?
museum recording. Okay, just for the sake of recording, let me repeat what we did here. We downloaded this data set. Uh, this is from language R package uh, from the book by Bayan. And um, I uh, filtered uh, this data set a little bit. And now I have this new data set in which we have variables uh, uh, that um, uh, have information about uh, lexical decision direction time uh, for some tasks uh, that uh, were given to some informants, uh, to some participants of the study. And these tasks are, are related to some words. And uh, here are parameters of these uh, words. Their frequency, uh, length, uh, family size, uh, this is something morphological, and this is a number of um, a number of synonyms according to some database. Uh, so now we're visualizing this data set. So uh, it is clear how to to interpret this uh, this uh, image, right? This picture. Uh, now let us. Uh, let us use uh, regressions. Uh, let me write some code. So now I use the same function LM as previously. LM stands for linear model and now uh, we consider a linear model that will uh, take into account uh, all these variables and try to predict uh, this variable. So uh, we have uh, we have a model now uh, that looks like uh, the following. So we have this uh, RT lexindec equals to beta naught plus beta one written frequency plus beta two. Length in letters and so on. So this is our model. And uh, I have to write this model in a form uh, that uh, is understandable for R. So I just use uh, the same notation as we discussed previously. This is just like this. And then I specify my data set, small. Let us try. Okay, it works. And now we can see into this fit the result of this model. And uh, we see these coefficients. Intercept is this beta naught. Uh, these are corresponding betas. So, for example, this value is an estimate for this beta one. Uh, now that uh, in uh, this formula. Uh, we use uh, this uh, tilde instead of uh, an equality. And here uh, we just uh, use all uh, variables that we want to include into the model. We uh, don't have to specify these betas explicitly because R understands that we just want to include all these models, uh, all, all these variables uh, into our model. Uh, so we just have to uh, write them here and 
and use this plus sign just to show that we have this variable plus this variable plus and so on. And um, in these regressions, uh, there is uh, some notation, um, some uh, terms of for this variable. This variable is called independent, uh, this variable is called dependent variable, and these variables are called independent variables. So uh, when we uh, plan our research, we have to specify uh, which variable will be dependent and which variables uh, will be independent. Uh, so here is some variable under consideration uh, and we are interested in how this variable depend, depends on uh, these variables. Uh, so here, our TLX deck, dependent variable. And these variables independent. Uh, sometimes they are called regressors, sometimes they are called predictors, sometimes they are called features. Um, it depends. Okay, now uh, does it work? Uh, did you get the same result as, as me? So uh, the first question that we discussed uh, at the lecture was uh, that uh, we have significance of um, a particular variable or a particular coefficient. And um, we can test every coefficient here uh, for significance. So for example, uh, we have this coefficient length in letters. It is 0.005. Six. Um, but is it uh, is it significant or not? Uh, we don't have this information here, but we can uh, make a summary of our fit, and uh, then we will get uh, this information. So for each coefficient, uh, we have this estimate. This is the estimated value of this coefficient. This is uh, the value of the corresponding coefficient in the best fit uh, line or plane. And um, th th what is uh, interesting for us is uh, this column, uh, these p-values uh, that test uh, null hypothesis uh, that we discussed. So, each of these, uh, each of these uh, values uh, corresponds to testing of the hypothesis that the corresponding variable is significant. Uh, so, uh, which variables, uh, which variables are significant in our case? Let us use a standard of 5% uh, significance level. Uh, which variables are significant? All of them. Mm, all of them, yes. Uh, so you see here, uh, this is 2e minus 16. It is uh, 2 times 10 to uh, the power of negative 16, it is very small number. And this is also small number. And this is also small number. And uh, actually, uh, actually this uh, number is not so small, but uh, anyway, if we use uh, 5%, uh, if we use 5% uh, as our uh, significance level, it is significant because the corresponding p-value is less than 5%. And the same holds uh, for this variable. So uh, actually, uh, R give us uh, a very quick and rough way to uh, distinguish 
uh, significant variables. If a variable is significant, then uh, our plots one or more stars here. So this one star corresponds to just a significant variable uh, with a 5% level of uh, significance level and uh, more stars uh, corresponds to a uh, smaller significance level. So this, uh, this is uh, what we have about significance. So even despite the fact that we uh, have a rather small uh, coefficient here, uh, in any case, um, we can uh, see that it is significant. So we probably can assume that uh, if, if we repeat this experiment, uh, then we probably uh, will get a similar, uh, similar result, at least a similar in terms, of, uh, in terms of the corresponding sign. So uh, at least we can assume that this dependence is in fact positive, that uh, the larger uh, the word is, the, uh, the more letters uh, it has, uh, the uh, larger reaction time we have, which is also quite natural uh, because uh, we expect that if the word is large, we need some time to read it. Uh, and uh, this can affect the reaction time. So this is, uh, this is what we see here. Um, again, we can uh, discuss some interpretations. Uh, for example, how can you interpret this, this coefficient length, length in letters? I don't know uh, what is the uh, in which units this uh, lexical decision time uh, is measured. Let me see, probably it is written somewhere. Mm, this is logarithm of reaction time. Uh, so, this is just a logarithm. Uh, this summary fit, and this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so, if you have uh, this result of this linear regression, then you can do some things with uh, this object. Uh, for example, you can do this summary. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, so how can we interpret this number. That is less than 5%, so it's not significant or mm. otherwise. Uh, which number is less than 5%? That one that you written? This, uh, no, zero, no, 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 look, look, uh, you don't, you don't, uh, uh, these uh, these values are not probabilities. These values are not p-values, uh, so you don't have to compare them with uh, any uh, significance level. You have to compare with the significance level these numbers. So for each, uh, so how to read this table? Actually, I'm interested in this column and this column. Uh, here, for each coefficient, it is written the corresponding estimate. So the corresponding value, estimated value of this coefficient, the corresponding value of beta. Uh, this is just this is just a, just a beta, and uh, here in this column are uh, corresponding p-values. So if you want to check a significance, then uh, you see at this at this column. 
So in this case, we have to compare this value with 5%. And um, so what, what can you do uh, after that? If we compare uh, this, this value with, with 5% and, and then what are your conclusions? So does it mean that other numbers are the coefficients of the correlation, regression correlation? Or not? Uh, these numbers, yes. uh, these numbers are the corresponding coefficients. Yes, these numbers, these numbers are these uh, these these betas. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Uh, this uh, number is less than uh, five percent. Uh, what what conclusion can we make? Mm. No, uh, look, uh, this this value is p-value. Uh, so this uh, this is p-value uh, for the following test. Uh, so this is uh, this is p-value for the following test, where null hypothesis uh, is that. Uh, coefficient near length in uh, length in letters beta equals to zero, and uh, Uh, so. so, as you already said, that if it is less than 5%, that means that it's significant. Mm, yes, uh, we have to, uh, we see that uh, this p-value is less than, less than significance level, uh, then uh, it is, uh, this coefficient uh, is significant. So, it, it means that it means that we can, uh, we can, at least it means that we see that there is some dependence. Uh, that the, the this coefficient, uh, this coefficient is not equals to zero in in our um, in our population that we don't see. Okay. So uh, significant means that. Uh, means that uh, it is uh, statistically distinguishable uh, from zero. Uh, so uh, the actual value of the corresponding estimate is this one. Uh, this is the value of the corresponding coefficient for uh, this variable. How can we interpret this number. That is positive regression coefficient. That means that um, if uh, the length is longer than uh, like time or estimate something is also bigger. Yes, uh, yes, uh, this is correct. This is interpretation of the sign of this coefficient. So we see that the sign is positive, and it means that uh, the the larger length, uh, the larger the resurrection time. This is correct. Okay, can we provide a little bit more precise interpretation? So we have some number here, uh, and if we do not interpret only the sign of this number, only the fact that 
uh, this number is positive, but if we interpret the number itself, how, what, what can you say? So we have this model, this model. And uh, now we see that the estimate for this, for the coefficient uh, length, um, length in letters. So this, for this coefficient beta two uh, is uh, this value. Uh, sorry, not this value, but this value. This is our estimate for this beta two. How can you interpret this beta two? Just its numeric value, not only not only the sign. This is very similar to the thing that we discussed at the lecture, but uh, it was some uh, life length and smoking and number of cigarettes. But here and there are something. Every letter in the word makes uh, the reading time longer on, uh, yes, uh, uh, almost correct. Uh, in fact, uh, this, uh, this value is not uh, in seconds. Um, so let me just copy what uh, Sarah uh, wrote uh, in chat because uh, it is almost correct uh, answer. The only, uh, the only problem is that in our case, uh, the dependent variable is not measured in seconds, but it is a logarithm of the reaction time. Uh, so uh, I would say that uh, every letter in the world increases uh, logarithm of uh, reaction time by this value. So it means that it increases slightly the corresponding the corresponding uh, reaction time. Actually, you can uh, you can find it in more exact form, but I just don't want to deal with exponents now. Uh, moreover, to be absolutely correct, we have to add here that uh, in this case uh, we. Uh, we uh, see that uh, it holds if we fix all other variables for all other equals. Uh, so uh, in other sense, uh, we can do the following thing. Uh, we can um, choose two words that are different only in the, uh, the length by one, letter and uh, all other properties of these words like written frequency, family size uh, and so on is the same. And then we will see uh, this difference in the logarithm of the reaction time between these words and this difference is given by this value. Uh, it is actually important because uh, if we do not uh, put uh, here this all other being equal, it is not exactly correct. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, look, if uh, if uh, p value is small, uh, if p value is small, it means that it is less than five percent, and uh, it means that we uh, have to make a conclusion that the corresponding coefficient is significant. So uh, if, uh, if these p-values were large on the opposite, uh, then uh, it is possible to, uh, then probably we can remove it from the model, at least we can try. Uh, but uh, in this case, we see that all variables are significant. So um, it means that all variables contribute something to uh, to this, uh, to to this thing. 
in, in other sense, it means that according to our data, uh, this variable depends on all of these variables significantly. Mm -hmm. Uh, by the way, let us uh, try to um, let us compare these results uh, with the result of the following uh, model. Let us consider only two variables. Let us consider only variable, uh, for example, this uh, RT lex deck and uh, length in letters. Uh, how do you think? Uh, will we get larger coefficient or smaller coefficient uh, than uh, we get here? So now I just ignore all other variables, uh, just just to uh, just to test uh, how this uh, thing works. Uh, I ignore all other variables. And uh, I try to see uh, the uh, relation between uh, these two variables uh, only. Uh, what happens? Let us see. And we see that this uh, length in letters decreased the corresponding estimate. That's interesting. So it means that if I do not take into account all other variables, uh, we have a smaller, um, smaller coefficient here. But if we take into account all other variables, we have larger coefficient here. Um, we probably will discuss uh, why this effect can happen on the next lecture. Okay, uh, are, there any, any, uh, are there any questions about uh, this? Okay, uh, actually we can uh, do some uh, other thing, things with this uh, fit uh, object. Uh, for example, we can get our coefficients. Uh, this is just the same coefficient, but uh, for example, I can get a particular coefficient from this, uh, from this object. Um, I can Yeah, uh, this is how to get a particular coefficient uh, for a particular variable. And uh, these uh, this, uh, are our residuals. So these are differences between, um, between our model predictions uh, and the actual data. Uh, so uh, it means uh, that this, uh, these values are the following things, uh, that we use uh, this formula 
uh, to find uh, the value of this variable using uh, values of, of uh, other variables. And then we can compare uh, these predictions with the actual value of uh, this variable. Uh, this difference uh, is called uh, this difference uh, is called a residual. Um, so actually, squares of these residuals is what uh, squares of some of these residuals uh, is what minimized uh, in our ordinary least squares uh, algorithm. Um, I beg your pardon, I have a question, like what does it mean, uh, these residuals, what do they uh, yep. mm -hmm. mean? So, uh, uh, so let me, let me return to my... Just a second. I'm trying to find. Mm Okay, what is residual? Uh, we have our data. Assume that we have just uh, uh, two, uh, two variables now. We have some data and uh, then we have our best fit line that is given by an equation y equals to b to naught plus b to one x. And uh, then for each point in our data, we can calculate the difference between uh, the value y of this point, this is yi, uh, assume that this point is point x i y i and uh, this means that we have uh, this uh, is uh, y i and uh, this value is uh, our prediction uh, so This is prediction of our model at point xi. Uh, so these uh, these predictions uh, are calculated. Um, The corresponding uh, x value is calculated uh, in the following way. I just put uh, x, I just put this xi to this formula. Uh, so it means that I have here uh, b to naught plus and b to one xi. And uh, this difference is residual. Uh, this is residual.
So uh, for each data point in our data set, I can find the corresponding residual. Uh, so uh, residual that corresponds to i uh, point in the data set uh, is Uh, this value. Actually, either this value or the same value, but with negative sign. I'm not sure uh, which one. Uh, what uh, we can subtract from what. But uh, this is calculated in this way. Um, is it more clear now? Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we... Uh, when we do this, when we run this command, uh, it just uh, uses the data from our data set, uh, substitute uh, them into the model, get prediction, and find uh, the difference between uh, the prediction and uh, the actual data. And uh, if, uh, actually, if you in fact have something like linear relationships, uh, this, um, these residuals uh, have to be, um, well, we can visualize them. Let us add uh, these residuals to our data. So we can do it in this way. And then we can plot some of them. Okay, let me just use plot. For example, I will use uh, some variable uh, like this variable and residual, the corresponding residual. Um, oh, let me use uh, some different, okay. Let me use, for example, a written frequency here. Um, we see that uh, as we change uh, written frequency, uh, these residuals uh, are also changed, but not so much. Um, we see that uh, there is uh, something strange uh, happens here, uh, but uh, basically uh, this picture is more or less uh, good from theoretical point of view. Uh, what do I mean? Uh, let us uh, return again to our original uh, to, 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 to my graph. Let me do it again. Uh, let us look at this picture. 
uh, if I draw these residuals uh, as a function of x, uh, it means that uh, I draw these differences. And uh, the new picture uh, will be like the following. So it will be like point here, point here, some point here. Here, 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 and here. So now this is X uh, and this is residual. Uh, is it clear how I create a new graph from the original graph? Uh, I just put Uh, for example, uh, this difference uh, equals to this difference, and uh, this difference equals to this difference, and this difference equals to this difference, and so on. Okay. Uh, now let us assume that our relation is not linear, in fact. Uh, let us uh, imagine the following graph. Something like this. Uh, what happens if we do uh, our linear regression? Uh, in any case, uh, linear regression will give us some straight line, just because uh, it is in our model. Uh, so we will get some straight line like this one. And uh, what happens uh, in the residual plots? So again, uh, I want to draw a residual. Yeah, uh, we will get uh, we will get something like a smile uh, because uh, we have some positive residuals here and here and some negative residuals here. Uh, so, I will get uh, some values like this. Uh, so, uh, if uh, we see a picture like this one, uh, it suggests us that in the original data, we didn't have uh, a linear relationship, but we have something something different like this. Uh, but uh, if we have, if we have, uh, for example, uh, something like this, And we do the same thing. And uh, again, we plot a residual. Then we will get something like this. Uh, 
Uh, so uh, this picture suggests that uh, we have a rather good linear relationship uh, in our data. It is not it is not a perfect linear, uh, linear relationship because uh, we see that uh, our points uh, do not perfectly lie uh, on the same straight line. Uh, but anyway, uh, we see that uh, this uh, this uh, relationship is more or less uh, more or less linear. So. Uh, when we increase x, uh, we have the same increment of y uh, at uh, any points. Uh, and uh, here uh, we see quite opposite. There is no linear relationship. This is some kind of nonlinear relationship here. And uh, we can see it uh, in this uh, residual graph. Uh, due to this smile, uh, smile picture. Uh, so uh, we can uh, uh, examine uh, these residuals and draw some plots with them uh, just to make sure that uh, our linear model uh, does not contradict data too much. And um, if it contradicts data too much, probably we have to improve it in some way, uh, either add some uh, additional terms uh, or uh, transform our data in some way so uh, we can think uh, a bit about it. But anyway, if uh, our model does not allow us to, to model the data that we have, uh, probably we have to think about different model. This is, um, this is uh, um, usually used logic in this, uh, in this studies. Uh, so let us uh, return to our R. Are there any question about uh, about this stuff? So let us return to R. And uh, here we see the residuals as a function uh, of uh, written frequency. Uh, what can you say about this graph? Are there any nonlinear relationship that is suggested by this graph or everything is okay? Basically, I think that uh, here we see something strange but uh, not so many points uh, like, like here. So uh, basically I assume that this graph is more or less okay. Uh, at least it doesn't give us any uh, strong evidence against this linear, uh, linear relationship. So it is linear, probably it is rather noisy, but okay, it is possible. Uh, so, uh, what can we do more with our model? Uh, sometimes you want to report uh, the coefficient uh, of these models. And uh, to do it, uh, it is useful to use a package that is called Stargazer. I'm not sure that it is installed for me. Let me install it. Stargazer. Mm -hmm. So I will use this library. Uh, 
uh, by default, uh, it gives uh, some tech source, but uh, I can ask it to give me uh, some HTML. Now I can include it into my document. Mm, I think I have to meet it. So it is processed. Okay. Uh, and uh, here is the result of our uh, of our model. Uh, you see that uh, it gives information about coefficients and uh, their significance and uh, some other uh, some other information that we uh, will discuss later uh, so uh, this is a useful package uh, when you need to report the results of your regression in a way you, when you just can include uh, include these results uh, into some paper that you write okay Are there uh, any questions so far? Okay, so uh, I think that uh, we discussed more or less everything that I planned. I think we can stop now if there are no questions. Um, actually, I have uh, a question about regression in general. Yes. So, for example, we um, want to create a model and we have uh, a lot of data, but uh, it is not so good as uh, we see today. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what um, do you have some algorithm? Uh, so what should we choose uh, to use more data, but uh, with uh, less level of significance? Or uh, we should uh, like remove some data, but uh, have more asterisks? Well, it's uh, it's a tricky it's a tricky question. Actually, so, uh, yeah, yeah, I understand. But <laughs> do you have some uh, universal decision about? No, I think that there are no universal decisions here because uh, when you think about um, when you think about these uh, formulas for regression, um, you have some models and. Um, on one hand, uh, if you have too many variables, uh, then your models, uh, your, your, your model become, uh, can become too, too complex. And if you have very complex model, it can explain any data that you have, but it will not uh, have a very good generalization ability. Just because uh, the, 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 the more complex model, uh, the more the more flexibility we have to to feed our data. Uh, so there are some ways to estimate um, some kind of um, 
effective. This is called goodness of fit. Uh, how how good uh, our model at fitting of the data, and uh, there are there are some estimates that allow us to um, estimate how good uh, the model will predict some data that uh, it didn't uh, see when we fit it. So, actually, what is a good model? A good model is a, a model that can uh, make a good predictions about uh, some data that uh, were not available uh, during uh, our fitting procedure. A good model is the model that generalizes to the new elements of data. And it is possible to estimate uh, to estimate how good our model at it. This is called, uh, the, the popular way to estimate it uh, is called Akaki Information Criterion, uh, AIC. And uh, this is given by uh, this is given by this output. Probably, let me see. Am I correct or not? No, it gives only adjusted R squared. Uh, then um, I will show you in the next uh, classes how to find this uh, AIC. So. Uh, sometimes uh, it is recommended uh, when you choose between different models to compare these models using this uh, uh, AIC. But anyway, it is not it is not absolutely universal advice uh, because anyway your model encodes somehow that your choice of your model encodes somehow your prior expectation uh, about about the domain that you study. Um, so okay uh, and uh, is it possible to um to check if our data if our model is good uh so we use uh, the uh, the significant uh amount of our data and then we uh just use the rest of it mm -hmm. uh like test group uh, yes. to yes this is uh, this is an approach that is used in machine learning extensively uh this is called cross validation when you feed your model to the part of your data and then test uh mm -hmm. the quality of your model on the rest uh, uh yes uh, this is actually what uh, akaki information criterion tries to estimate mm -hmm. actually uh, Personally, I like uh, I like this approach with cross validation because I understand how it works. Uh, and if you are really interested uh, in the prediction power of your model, this is a good this is a good way to uh, to, to to estimate it. Uh, in particularly in linear in linear regressions, uh, probably it's a little bit over you know, uh, overkill because you can use AIC for uh, for linear mm -hmm. models, a like information criteria, and that I think it will be in agreement with this cross validation. But uh, instead of using cross validation, uh, using of AIC uh, allows you to use the whole data in your estimates. You don't need to reserve some data as your holdout set. Uh, but um, uh, in more complex model, uh, this cross validation is very useful. Uh, the only thing that uh, I want to stress is that. It is possible that you sometimes uh, the quality of prediction is not what you're interested in, and uh, there is um, a large science uh, in uh, like in econometrics uh, that studies um, some properties of your statistical models in terms not in terms of the pred prediction quality, but in terms uh, of uh, how good are your estimates of your coefficients? But mm, anyway, you cannot do anything without some some prior modeling, some prior um, some knowledge about about your uh, your your processes that you model. Uh, so you don't have you don't have some ultimate uh, ultimate solution here. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, other questions, please. Sorry, could you go over uh, how you made that stargazer table appear in your needed uh, HTML? It doesn't I, happen for me for some reason. Well, uh, I don't know. Uh, I just uh, I just added these results as is. 
I'm not sure, uh, I'm not sure should it work or not. Yeah, I did the same, but it uh, doesn't show me a nice table. Uh, so you you really need uh, need to HTML, right? Or you try to uh, just yeah. preview? Uh, 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 oh no, I just previewed. Okay, uh -huh. I'll yeah. try to. Yes, uh, you see that when uh, when I just run this cell, I have this HTML. So when I do preview. I will get this HTML as well, but if I uh, if I run this knit to HTML, then it works. And if I have no knit button, mm. I see this preview button first. Uh, yes, you I can see. just uh, click here, and then it will. It, it it will be uh, possible to change it to knit, but then for me preview button disappears, so that's a bit strange. Okay, other questions. So if there are no questions, uh, I think that's all for today. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.